Now we have a uh, new exercise program for you. Uh, as we looked at the right bomb, balance optimization, move it address, and the closed kinetic chain, and then looking at the putter, uh, I began to test uh, those two moves in all nine core regions. I want to show you what that looks like now. First of all, I have my uh, nine core regions. If you don't have this, you can go to a right balance professional. If you go to a right balance site, uh, input your zip code. It'll give you the location of a right balance professional near you. We are in 13 countries now, so uh, in all over the United States. So you should be able to find a professional. Do your body measurements. These stance widths are a sampling, or actually a mapping of the core. This is a Fibonacci sequence. We use Fibonacci numbers in uh, getting to our point of origin and doing the measurements, and then as we plot the progression, those are Fibonacci uh, measurements, which basically means we've found uh, nature's uh, symmetry for the human body. Uh, so these stance widths will change based upon your height, your weight, shoulder width, body width, and the shoe size. All of those measurements are taken by a right balance professional. So let's take a look now. Well, first of all, let me put the bar on. You've seen um, the functional testing, 4x4. Four 4x4 four. Four four functional test is really pretty straightforward. So if I stand on this mat at any stance width, you can see how much rotation I have with my hips. And I'm on the same line here. If I had knee flex looking straight ahead, I still have that same rotation. If I take a step forward with the right foot, you can see that I have rotation of the hips. If I take a step back with the left foot, you can see I have rotation of the hips. If I step forward with the left foot, my hips rotate to the right. And if I step back with the left foot, my hips rotate. Those are the four functional assessments. Uh, you can go online and uh, view other videos and it describes what plane of motion we're measuring. So when we use the closed kinetic chain uh, to do exercise, you have to use these nine numbers. If you do not use uh, the right balance numbers, what you saw on the video, uh, the 15 changes that we see with uh, full swing that addresses increased shoulder rotation, uh, leveling of the hips, leveling the shoulders, that will remain as long as the feet don't move, as long as the feet remain stationary. Then we saw, you saw the video of the optimization, right balance optimization move for the putter, just the opposite of the full swing. And that works with, as you saw, hitter at the plate, tennis player, uh, it go, the, the list goes on and on. So the fascinating thing that uh, you uh, I've also seen, before I show you the exercise, let's take a look at how my hands hang. So you'll see that my hands, when I go to a lower core number, how my hands do not hang. My left hand is internally rotated, my hips left uh, rotated to the left. If you look at my right hand, how far externally rotated it is. Now I'm, that's, a, that's number one. I'm going to go to number five, right in the middle of my mid core. My right hand turns in a little bit. My left hand is still turned in. You'll notice my right shoulder's down and my right hip is higher than my left. If I put my thumbs here, and you'll notice you can see my right shoulder's down. I can just feel it in the length of my hands down on the side of my slacks here, too. So if I go to number nine, and my right hand turns in a little bit more, my left hand's still internally rotated. Those are all factors we look at uh, that are part of that functional 4x4 four four functional test. So, uh, the exercise is simple. All I've done is extrapolated from the right balance optimization move for uh, full swing and the right balance optimization move with putter. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do these one through nine. And if you do these, uh, well, you'll see the changes. The other thing that we see are changes in, uh, if you've watched some of the other videos, changes in the carrying angle will occur and external shoulder rotation as well. Those historically have changed by core region. First thing I have to do is, is close the kinetic chain. I'm on zero and one. Okay? 
I go forward, I roll my shoulders toward the sternum, very the same as the uh, right balance optimization move in the full swing. Take two deep breaths. And you can hold pretty, you don't have to hold a, a golf club. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Two deep breaths as I lean back, pinching my shoulder blades together. And I go to number two. Pinching the shoulders toward the sternum. And on number two, I lean back now, pinch the shoulder blades together. I'm going to do that on all nine core region stance moves. And you'll notice how quickly this is going. And this is a very fast program. That's four. Go to five. And I go to six. And I go to seven. And I go to eight. Now, I've only done eight. I have one more to do. But I want to show you something. Proof of concept runs through all of our right balance procedures. Proof of concept. So if I go back here, put this on my hips, and I stand tall, I haven't done nine. You have to do all of these. You'll notice I have actually even more rotation standing tall than I had earlier. Add knee flex, and I still get that same greater rotation, same line. I take a step forward, hips still rotate. Take a step back with the right, hips still rotate back. I take a step forward with the left, hips still rotate back with the left. Now, I'm going to do the same thing on nine. <clears throat> and in the interest of time, I've gone through all of these, but if you do these in groups of three, one through three, lower core, four, five, six, mid core, seven, eight, nine, upper core, after you finish three, you'll be good, meaning you'll be square in all of those until you do the first number of the next, uh, next core region. Okay, this is number nine. Okay. Create the closed kinetic chain. And you do not have to have your golf grip. You can just grip. As long as you have both hands on the same implement, uh, these exercises will work. I just finished 40 subjects with these exercises, testing them in great detail. But now when I stand on this line, you'll see my hips are absolutely square. At knee flex, they stay square. If I take a step forward, they stay square. If I take a step back, they stay square. I've done all nine core regions. If I take a step back with the left, my foot, my uh, hips, uh, pelvis stays square. If I take a step forward. So this has implications for all performance, as you're going to see now. As I face you straight ahead, something very interesting happens with the other exercises, right balance optimization exercises that you've been doing, are not in a closed kinetic chain. This is the first time we've seen this, and it's consistent across all subjects. But notice how my hands hang. I'm on one. Okay, as I face you straight ahead. Notice how my hands hang the same. If I go to five, notice how my hands did not move. They still hang the same way they did in the lower core region. And if I go to nine, they still hang the same. If I show you my, my carrying angle, my power angle, notice that well, I'm on nine. Notice how severe that is? If I go to one, it does not change. If I go to f six mid-core, it does not change. It stays the same. So if, I, if you look at me this way, we talked, you've seen some of the other videos on determining 
your uh, ideal plane core region. This is really, this, when you finish this express exercise, we call it right balance express, it's fast, it's closed kinetic chain. When you finish this, you're going to feel contact with the floor unlike you've felt ever before. Uh, you're going to have a, a total covering of, of the floor with your feet, heel to toe. You're just going to feel locked in. Uh, and that's where you're going to have your best performance, by the way. So, if I go to one, and I show you my, ex see my external shoulder rotation, I'm going to hold that, go to nine, you'll notice it didn't change. And if I go to four, it's still the same. So my trail arm delivery, I'll show you face on here, is really coming in from the side. Uh, is, and that's going to be the best indicator of where I'm going to play from. So if I'm going to show you the trail arm deliver here. So as I do this, say one more thing. See my trail arm delivery is here. Notice my forearm. My forearm and hand are in one line here and that's going to be my uh, side <coughs> trail arm delivery here from the side. That's perfect. Uh, mid core. If I were upper core I'd be here. If I were lower core I'd be here mid-core right here. So you'll have from your right balance professional, this is your exercise strip, one like I'm working with. They will give you six to eight stance widths that you would use for playing. Now for performance, one of the things this does not do, if you'll recall with the one second move at address, and I get both hands on and I push out, that club face is still going to close. I'm still going to have roll. I'm still going to get club face roll, shaft roll. As soon as I make the <coughs> optimization bomb, optimization move at address, now that takes care of it. So you want to do both. You, still, you don't want to discontinue the other, but this is, that's one of the few things that you'll see that this exercise does not change. You can see how level my hips are, how my hands hang the same, and how level my shoulders are. So vary that, that right balance. A closed kinetic chain exercise is great for performance. Now, is it good for pain management? We know the right balance optimization exercises. We go very deliberately, not in a closed kinetic chain, but as we go very deliberately through each plane of motion, that that provides uh, relief over a series of days. Whether this does or not, we're not sure. So don't discard the right balance optimization if you're doing it, but this is a, definitely for pre-performance. Try it, uh, and you will find uh, your hips level, your shoulders level, you get a lot, and this will last a very long time, by the way. First time I did this uh, a few months back, it lasted 24 hours. So just finish the testing, uh, try it, you'll enjoy it, and uh, it's a game changer. When I get set at a dress, my hips are going to be absolutely square. After complete, I can have any kind of grip. I'm way under with the right hand. I have a ridiculous grip here and my hips have remained square. So um, your, hip, your, your hips will remain square. Your club face will not necessarily be aimed down the line. Is, uh, you still want to okay Looking at this, you should see that that club face is aimed right, okay? My hips are square, but the club face is aimed right. I make the right balance optimization move and address. Club face is now aimed down the line, and the path is absolutely true. So if I raise one foot, and I were just to look at path, club face is aimed right, but the path is still pretty darn good. So uh, the right balance optimization move is still at address. When you do the... Close kinetic chain, right balance uh, exercises. Uh, you're going to be ready for performance. Still make the right bomb, and uh, you're good to go. You're going to have a very balanced core, very balanced body, very grounded setup, uh, and uh, you should play a lot better. We see players are using this increasing uh, distance by anywhere from a half to a full club because of the increased shoulder rotation uh, for a variety of reasons.